Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and today we're looking at the 10 most beautiful helmets ever made. Now before starting, if you like these kind of videos, make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. Become a number one to never miss any new upload. And here are a couple of videos that I strongly suggest you to check out, particularly the top 10 gladiators is a video I'm really proud of. But without further ado, let's get into our list. At number 10, we've got the Pembridge helmet. Now, given this is not a particularly fancy looking helmet, we will have some helmets that will blow your mind towards the top of this list, but still, this helmet in its simplicity, it's still one of my favorite helmets. I find it just very intriguing. It's so iconic of the image of the knight that I couldn't help but putting it at least at the bottom of this list. It's a 14th century great helmet. It belonged to one of King Edward's III knights, namely Sir Richard Pembridge, hence the name. Sir Pembridge actually fought in the 100 Years' War. It's made from steel and it is on display at the National Museum of Scotland. At number nine, we've got a Japanese samurai helmet and it belongs to a specific kind of helmets that are called kawari kabuto, which means strange or different helmets. And the reason why I find it particularly pleasing to my eye is because generally speaking, I always like samurai helmets, but kawari kabuto are very particular because they look outwardly. What this specific helmet communicates to me. The sort of vibes it gives is very demonic. Look at the pitch thick rich black lacquer in combination with the two symmetrical gigantic horns. It really transmits this sort of dark hellish feeling that really caught my eye. I find, I find it absolutely stunning. And at number eight we have another Kawari Kabuto. So again one of these very strange outworldly looking helmets. And the reason why this one is, is a little higher is because of this bronze finish together with this huge exaggerated back that kind of makes it look like as if it was out of, I don't know, some sort of anime or even some sort of, you know, robot in a way. Imagine the man wearing this together with a full suit of samurai armor on top of a horse, how much taller he would seem. He would look not just the artistic beauty, but the illusion that these sort of huge crests would bring. Also, compared to the previous Kawari Kabuto that we just looked, which had, as I said, a demonic dark feel to it, this one in instead gives you more of the idea of out of a Buddhist tale, like some sort of spiritual being, a righteous outwardly creature rather than a demonic one. At number seven, we are going back to Europe and we are looking at a specific Italian barbut. Now, Italian barbutes usually come out being one of three specific patterns, T-shaped, Y-shaped and arch-shaped. Although I like all of them, my favorite are always the Y-shaped. This one specifically is dated 1470 to 1480, so late 15th century, and it's found, you can go and check it out at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, from Brescia, Italy, made of steel, created by the armorer Pietro da Castello. It's a perfect merging between the classical and the medieval. So I chose this specific barbute because it gives me that idea of a heroic knight. But alternatively, if you don't like that idea, then you can replace it with this either kind of barbut, still Italian and particularly elongated, which instead gives it the idea of a some sort of evil infernal guardian, very Dark Soul-like. This one specifically is from 1475, created by the Italian armorer Bernardino da Carnago. Hey number one, before we continue to the next helmet, I'd like to mention the sponsor who made this video possible, Audible. Now, I'm really happy that Audible decided to sponsor this video because it's a site I actually use and I like. You can use it on your phone, you can use it on your tablet. And it's interesting because not only you can find a huge amount of audiobooks, but you can also find lots of podcasts, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, A-list comedies, and also exclusive Audible originals you won't find anywhere else. Fun fact, if you actually decided to go ahead and listen to all that Audible has to offer, you will need exactly three centuries. <laughs> no jokes. Visit www.audible.com slash Metatron or text Metatron to 500 500 and get started with your free trial. And remember that if you decide to get an Audible membership, you can download titles and listen offline anytime, anywhere and take your time to choose and decide what you want to listen to. Also remember that every month, Audible members get one free audiobook and two Audible original. Now personally, for me, there are two ways in which I particularly like listening to audiobooks, because in my case, I actually listen to audiobooks and I'll tell you what audiobook I've been listening to that is really, really good and I suggest you to check out. Um, first is when I polish my armor, because you know, polishing all my blades and armor and steel takes quite a lot of time, sometimes even a few hours, and it's perfect for me while I'm 
doing that sort of manual work to have an audiobook in the background playing so I can imagine all of these uh, fantasy settings because I like listening to fantasy books while I'm actually polishing armor, plate, helmets and whatnot. And the second situation in which I like listening to audiobooks is during commuting. So for example, I'm flying, I'm on a bus, I'm in a train. I like listening to audiobooks because they help me go through the amount of hours that I need to wait until reaching my destination and it really makes my traveling time and my commuting time a lot easier to go through. Personally, a book that I recommend that I've been listening to is Homeland by R.A. Salvatore of the Dark Elf Trilogy. If you like fantasy and you like combat and sword masters, probably my favorite fantasy book ever. And it was great to find it here on Audible. So remember to visit www.audible.com metatron or text metatron to 500, 500 to get your free one month trial with Audible. Now at number six, we're getting back to the Kawari Kabuto again. Now what I like about this helmet is the contrast between gold and black, and this sort of claw that again gives the helmet a very aggressive and pleasing to the eye look. Also notice that the last plate of the neck guard, which in Japanese is called Shikoro, on this helmet is actually lacquered in gold. So this would have belonged to someone who was extremely rich, as it's the case for most of these helmets anyways. The gorgeous decoration in the front of the helmet represents Amida Nyorai standing on a lotus flower with a majestic set of rays around him, linked to the Buddhist tradition of the supernatural. So at number five we've got the frog mouth. This helmet you either love it or you hate it. There is no middle ground. It's a jousting frog mouth, very very famous from circa 1500s, German, made of steel with some copper alloy. It formed part of a highly specialized tournament armor worn for the joust of peace. I am one of those who really love the frog mouth design. It just looks imposing, intimidating, and it really gives you that idea of a knight as a tank that is basically unstoppable. It's very dehumanizing because you can't even see the shape of the face of a human head. You just see something that resembles some sort of steel animal and that's what I like about it. It's also in a way partly regal as it kind of gives that idea of a cup that you might use to drink some wine. Maybe it's just my head but I've always loved the frog mouth design and that's why it's up here. And number four we have the salad of Emperor Maximilian I circa 1490s-1495, most likely made by Lorenz Helschmidt in Germany. Now generally speaking salads are just beautiful the way they are, even just normal salads. Now this one was most likely invented for the Emperor around the time he became the head of the Holy Roman Empire in 1493. I love the gilt fleur-de-lis trim and of course originally it bordered the entire helmet so you need to use a little bit of imagination here. But it creates this contrast between steel and gold which kind of resembles silver and gold, which were the colors, for example, used by the Templars, the Crusaders. This kind of decoration is typical of the late Gothic decoration of high quality, high end armor. Of course, the helmet is made of steel, copper alloy, and gold. One of the reasons why I really like the salad is because it reminds me of Robocop. I like the overbite of the salad over the bever. And another thing I like is the tail, the elongated tail at the back of the helmet. I find it very, very beautiful to look at. Now at number three, we've got another samurai helmet, a Kawari Kabuto, but this one, even though it's not as fancy as other Kawari Kabuto that we have seen, is because of the combination of colors together with the form that you have in the decoration of the top of the helmet. So look at the beauty of that bluish purple iron plate in combination with the dull gold horns together with the orange lacing. It's just a perfect combination of colors. Putting that on top of a matched samurai suit of armor would make it for an absolutely stunning samurai to look at. Yes, the horns are not as big as others, so perhaps less imposing, but for some reason there is just something about this color combination, this color story, that really hits me. It really speaks to me. Now, a number two is a tournament helmet, and this choice might actually surprise you. And I know that many people probably wouldn't have put this specific helmet at number two, but I'd like to say why. This is the tournament helmet of Sir Gil's Capel. 
a real treasure that you can go and have a look at at the Mets collection. It's a helmet for foot for tournaments or mock combat. Circa 1510, possibly British. It is a great bassinet, entirely made of steel. What I love about this helmet is that specifically with night helmets, the ones I like the most are the ones that are perforated, where you look through many holes rather than two holes for or, or one single ocularia for your eyes. I don't know what it is. It's just the fact that it makes you look less human. Imagine if any one of those holes was actually an eye. And of course, the reason for those perforations are to avoid overheating, ventilation. But it's probably the fact that, I, you know, I've always seen these kind of helmets, even in very old games, like from Nintendo Entertainment System, even Game Boy. And I like the very sleek, rounded shape of this one. And I imagine it together with a full sort of plate armor epic. Now, before moving to number one, I've got an honorable mention, and it's a samurai helmet, specifically the helmet used by Date Masamune. The helmet did not make the list because if I compare it to the super fancy Kawari Kabuto, his regular battlefield Kabuto is not going to give you that kind of outworldly vibe and that's why it's not on the list. But it's an honorable mention because I think that if we stop looking at the Kawari Kabuto and just look at regular samurai helmet, then it's my favorite because of this very famous half moon crescent, but it's definitely an honorable mention also to my favorite samurai of all Date Masamune. And at number one, we have one last Kawari Kabuto samurai helmet that I find to be an absolute work of art. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but if you haven't, take a moment because this is absolutely incredible. It's a 19th century helmet, a 10 plate silver splashed iron Kabuto. The back is rising in a form reminiscent of a Chinese crown style helmet. And the front has got embossed swirling eyebrows with a narrow brim. What's amazing is that the top plate of the shikoro, so the, the back of the helmet, which are made of iron, are cut into a row of linked cloud shapes. This is a frigging canvas. This is a work of art. Five black lacquered iron plates with a large gilt wood yokodate, or side crest of flames. So air, fire, metal. This helmet is a representation of a guardian deity together with a drifting cloud with a Sanskrit character for that deity. Imagine a samurai wearing this proudly on top of his horse with his weapons, his full armor. It would be absolutely stunning. So this is why this is helmet number one.